aka long range receiver and a transmitter for your drone uh, it's based on LoRa so I'm using LoRa 433 which is a yeah I'm using LoRa 433 so you can use LoRa 915 megahertz it's fine uh, you can change that in code I will show you that too now uh, we need uh, two joysticks you need two ESP32 now you also need a switch you only need one switch for your drone just arming the drone require at least one switch so you can go with the one switch or you can use two switch this is a three position switch you need that um, that's all you need and you need a bunch of uh, jumper cables now I also saw a bunch of people using NRF module for the transmission now NRF modules are great but not comparable to LoRa modules if you're using NRF modules you could give an upgrade to LoRa modules now these modules can do 1.5 kilometers and uh, LoRa modules can do around 10 kilometers which is a uh, huge difference previously I tried to make a long range transmitter and a receiver by using the ESP now protocol and uh, the range was quite good but need no range so I thought of using LoRa modules and uh, from that to this the upgrade is quite minor so now first I'm going to make the transmitter so I'm using this ESP I need to take a uh, seven wires or eight wires and connect it first you have to connect the ground right down to the ground then you have to connect to pin 5 Then you have to connect to pin number 19. Then you have to connect to 27. Then you have to connect to 18. It's in the middle. Then you have to connect to pin number 14. So one four, right somewhere here. So there we have it, pin number 14. Then the final pin is 26. So you see it look like this. Then you have to VCC you have to connect it but uh, so for the VCC I have uh, made a wire like this. Now this is for it's for the switch so the first one the middle one is the VCC and the left one and the right one is the switch so it's a three position switch so bring it up. Now you have to take uh, two wires so this is a female connector and I've connected all the middle point of the switches to the single connection so this is the VCC that I have that we have to connect uh, red we connect to the ground first ground then the second pin is SCK then Miso then Mossy then the SS means the NSS wire so you have to connect that then you have to connect the reset then you have to connect the DITO I mean DIT0 then you have to connect the DIT0 see that's how it should look now you have to take your now this is the whole ECC wire so you get one for here one for here and uh, two three wires here so you have to connect the VCC to your uh, LoRa module and after you connect that you have to connect the VCC to your joysticks the switches here you have already done it on the middle For the switch wiring, there is 25 and 13. So I will take the first switch and connect it to the 25 and 13. 25 of the GPIO 13. Right here, 13. Then we have to take the next switch. Right, we have two wires from that too so for the switch now we have to connect to the 15 and 17 
Now we have the switch ready. Uh, we have to make the uh, wire for the ground and the analog wires to the ESP now. So I'll show you that. Now you have to make a wire like this. Now this is a ground wire, so we are using ground for this. Now connect it to your ground. We have a bunch of three grounds on ESP, I think. You get three grounds. Now after that, you connect with one ground and connect to the ground of the joysticks. And the second ground. Then you have to take a bunch of jumper cables and you have to connect the you have to connect to the 34 and uh, 35. Then you have to take the next joysticks and uh, next joystick and uh, connect the wire, the X and Y. After you take that, you have to connect to the 32 and 30, 33. So there we have it. Uh, we have our transmitter is ready. Now for the receiver, you have to get wire like this and the ESP ready. Now we have to connect the same way we did on here. So we we'll start with the VCC this time. Point three, then the ground. Then the pin number 5, and pin number 19, then pin number 27, then pin number 18, pin number 14, 26 now. Awesome. This is how it should look. Then you have to take your Aurora module and start connecting the VCC. So 3.3 first, and the second one was ground. And the third was for the SCK. SCK, then MISO, then MOSI one, and NCC, and SS in this way, so MSS. Then we have to connect the reset. Then the last wire from the ESP is for the 26 wire, goes to the the ID. So there we have it. Now we have the receiver. Now, now for this example, I am using an ESP32 based flight controller. So you can use your own flight controller. Almost all flight controllers support the IBUS protocol. So I am using IBUS protocol. If you are having a F4, F7, or a F7 or some kind of a flight controller, all of the flight controllers will support the IBUS protocol. Now, if you are not using an ESP32 based flight controller, you have to make sure that the serial port is same on the on the uh, beta flight software. So, for here, the output is pin number 17. So this is our receiver, and pin number 17 is our output. I'm connected pin here. After you open the uh, GitHub, then you have to you will see two codes. So one is for the receiver, and another for the transmitter. And you can also check the releases. Uh, this is this is uh, one release that I have uh, basic center stake calibration. Now this uh, this is a uh, basic one. So this is a little more advanced calibration. But I would say you guys to download the latest version. And uh, this is a basic one, so, uh, so you can download that, or you could uh, find the TX and RX here. And you have to open the TX. I will show you one more stuff. Try the TX. You will see there is a code, and uh, you see here this is the uh, spread factor for the LoRa. So now you have to go to the uh, LoRa's uh, documentation, and you will see the spread spread factor. So we have one to five kilohertz. We are, we are going to run at that and the payload is always going to be about 9 bytes so it's fine you can use all the spread factor but if you use the highest spread factor which is 12 you will have a high delay so you have to make sure that you use a lower spread factor so spread factor of 7 is great for drones and a spread factor of 9 would give you at 10 kilometers 
or 11, 12, 20. If you want a long range, you have to use a higher spread factor, but the delay is going to be high. So in the RX, this is the RX code, and this is the DX code. Now you'll see spread factor of seven, which I'm using. So on here, you also have to change that. And if you are using LoRa 915, uh, you have to change 915 here. And you also have to change here. If you are going to change anything on the TX, you also have to change on the RX. So you see, uh, my maximum TX power is 18 dBm. So you have to make sure that if your LoRa can support 20, uh, 20, you have to change that to get the maximum range. So we are using 125 kilohertz as per the documentation. Then you have to, um, this is the pins. This is for the joystick. This is for the joystick Y, or is for the switch. Now, if you are having some kind of issues with the, you know, analog joystick, we have a, a small dead zone. So you have, you can change that to 30, 20, however you want. So this is the full code. You have to copy it and paste it on your, uh, Arduino code. Now so we have to install a library. So this is for the TX code and this is for the RX code. Now here is the TX, this is the RX. Now you have to download it, you have to click library, then type LoRa. Then you will be need to, needing to download this LoRa by Sandeep. You have to do you have to install this LoRa and after you install that you can flash it on your uh, ESP32. This is for the TX, the transmitter, and this is for the receiver. You have to have the same configuration. If you're using 1915, uh, you have to also change the 915 and spread, fa spread factor to be 7. And uh, if you are going with spread factor 7, you have to also change that. And the LoRa bandwidth, you also have to change that more more in the documentation. And now we see that after uploading the code, uh, this is the TX module and this is the RX. We can see the values are pretty fine. Now you see that the values are going from the TX to the RX. And uh, if you change the joystick values, you can see the values are changing. So, yeah, zero. See right here, this is the. Uh, value from the TX you can see the values are changing and increase decrease then the receiver side here and change it you can see the values are changing 100 200 and the next pitch also changing to 100 now you also have this this is the negative uh, 12 dpm which is the I think for the LoRa is 120 so yeah if you get minus 100, 120 that means the range is pretty bad now this is a minus 12 which means the range is pretty good check that now we are going to change uh, we are going to turn on the beta flight now open the beta flight and you see it's connected the port the 32 pin is UR2 so I have to turn it on and let's save and reboot then I go to the receiver side you see that the values are now stable Beyond because this joystick is a sender value, so all values are sender, so the throttle will also be sender. And uh, then you can see everything is working fine. The uh, switches too, let me check the switch. See the aux too is changed. So 170. So let me check the second switch, you see. So uh, this is the uh, setup. Now I'm going to check the range. You see the receiver and you can see the values are updating a code again. So you see that when I increase the joystick. You see here the pitch value is going low and then I decrease it. You see the pitch value is getting high. So if you are if you wanted the value inverse, so you see here yeah, there you see the direction. You can change it. Now the direction uh, one is the original and if you want uh, the inverse it's uh, type two, that's it. So let's uh take the range. In here the receiver got disconnected probably due to human error so uh, 
I am too lazy to do it again so you guys can see here you can see the uh, range and the factor for the range and uh, thank you for watching please subscribe to the YouTube channel